I will suggest a protocol by which you can achieve a better relationship to your activities and to your dopamine system. In fact, it will help tune up your dopamine system for discipline, hard work, and motivation. We hear all the time now about dopamine hits, but actually there's no such thing as a dopamine hit. And actually the way that your body uses dopamine is to have a baseline level of dopamine, meaning an amount of dopamine that's circulating in your brain and body all the time. And that turns out to be important for how you feel generally, whether or not you're in a good mood, motivated, etc. Dopamine has everything to do with how you feel right now as you're listening to this. It has everything to do with how you will feel an hour from now, it has everything to do with your level of motivation and your level of desire and your willingness to push through effort. How does dopamine work and what does it do? Well, first of all, it is not just responsible for pleasure. It is responsible for motivation and drive. Dopamine is also vitally important for movement. Dopamine tends to stimulate sympathetic arousal. Sympathetic doesn't have anything to do with sympathy. It just simply means that it tends to increase our levels of alertness. It tends to bring an animal or a human into a state of more alertness, readiness, and desire to pursue things outside the confines of its skin. So if I were to just put a really simple message around dopamine, it would be there's a molecule in your brain and body that when released tends to make you look outside yourself, pursue things outside yourself, and to crave things outside yourself. But if ever you felt lethargic and like just lazy and you had no motivation or drive, that's a low dopamine state. If ever you felt really excited, motivated, even if you were a little scared to do something, maybe you did your first skydive or you're about to do your first skydive or you're about to do some public speaking and you really don't want to screw it up, you are in a high dopamine state. Dopamine is a universal currency in all mammals, but especially in humans for moving us toward goals and how much dopamine is in our system at any one time compared to how much dopamine was in our system a few minutes ago and how much we remember enjoying a particular experience of the past, that dictates your so-called quality of life and your desire to pursue things. And it's the way that you track pleasure. It's the way that you track success. It's the way that you track whether or not you are doing well or doing poorly. And that is subjective. But if your dopamine is too low, you will not feel motivated. If your dopamine is really high, you will feel motivated. Your experience of life and your level of motivation and drive depends on how much dopamine you have relative to your recent experience. This is again, something that's just not accounted for in the simple language of dopamine hits. I got Giardia and Giardia is a stomach bug that if any of you ever had it, it is terrible. It's terrible diarrhea. You end up very dehydrated very quickly. You drop a ton of weight and it is extremely unpleasant. I ended up going to the emergency room and in the emergency room, I begged them for something to stop up my guts and they gave it to me. They put a saline line in to rehydrate me and they injected something into the saline bag. And within minutes, I felt more sadness, more overwhelming sense of depression, basically lower than I'd ever felt in my entire life. It was absolutely profound. I, I was crying endlessly without knowing why I was crying. I was miserable. And I asked them, what did you inject? And they said, we injected Thorazine. Thorazine is an antipsychotic drug. It's actually used to block dopamine receptors. It's what's given to people who have schizophrenia, often is given to people who have schizophrenia because schizophrenia involves, among other things, elevated levels of dopamine. It was horrible. The experience of it was miserable, unlike anything I'd ever experienced. And so I actually said to them, you have to give me L-Dopa. You have to give me something to get my dopamine levels back up again. And they did. They gave me an injection of L-Dopa into the bag, went straight into my bloodstream. And within minutes, I felt fine again. It was incredible. And it really opened up my mind and my experience to what it is to have absolutely plummeted levels of dopamine. There's nothing more miserable than that, I'll tell you. So let's talk about the baseline of dopamine that we all have and the peaks in dopamine that we all can achieve through different activities and things that we ingest. All of us have different baseline levels of dopamine. Some of this is sure to be genetic. Some people just simply ride at a level a little bit higher. They're a little bit more excited. They're a little bit more motivated. 
Or maybe they're a lot more excited or a lot more motivated. Some people are a little mellower. Some people are a little less excitable. And some of that has to do with the fact that dopamine doesn't act alone. Dopamine has close cousins or friends in the nervous system. Epinephrine, also called adrenaline, is the main chemical driver of energy. We can't do anything, anything at all, unless we have some level of epinephrine in our brain and body. But essentially what you need to know is that dopamine and epinephrine, aka adrenaline, are family members and they tend to work together like a little gang to make you seek out certain things. So what sorts of activities, what sorts of things increase dopamine and how much do they increase dopamine? Chocolate. Chocolate will increase your baseline level of dopamine 1.5 times. Sex. Both the pursuit of sex and the act of sex increases dopamine two times. So it's a doubling above baseline. Nicotine. In particular, nicotine that is smoked, like cigarettes and so forth, increases dopamine two and a half times above baseline. Cocaine will increase the level of dopamine in the bloodstream two and a half times above baseline. And amphetamine, another drug, will increase the amount of dopamine in the bloodstream 10 times above baseline. A tremendous increase in dopamine. Exercise. Now, exercise will have a different impact on the levels of dopamine depending on how much somebody subjectively enjoys that exercise. So if you're somebody who loves running, chances are it's going to increase your levels of dopamine two times above your baseline, not unlike sex. People who dislike exercise will achieve less dopamine increase or no increase in dopamine from exercise. And if you like other forms of exercise like yoga or weightlifting or swimming or what have you, again, it's going to vary by your subjective experience of whether or not you enjoy that activity. Let's take a step back and ask, why would we have a dopamine system like this? Why would we have a dopamine system at all? Well, we have to remember what our species' primary interest is. Our species, like all species, has a main interest, and that's to make more of itself. And it's not just about sex and reproduction. It's about foraging for resources. Resources can be food. It can be water. It can be salt. can be shelter. can be social connection. Dopamine is the universal currency of foraging and seeking, right? We call, sometimes talk about motivation and craving, but what we mean in the evolutionary adaptive context, what we mean is foraging and seeking, seeking water, seeking food, seeking mates, seeking things that make us feel good and avoiding things that don't make us feel good.